In this class, we're going to consider how you find the x and the y-intercept of a straight line graph. And we're also going to consider what it means to be a point on a straight line graph versus a point that's not on a straight line graph. And that's going to help kind of deepen our understanding of the equations of straight lines. So I've got these three examples for us to work through. They're all in different formats, which is the main skill that you've got to learn here. How to deal with different formats, because you're not always going to get straight lines, which are in the friendly y equals mx plus c format, but that's a great starting point. You might get some of those, but there's fairly likely you'll see variations of that, and in particular these um, sort of jumbled up formulas. So just a reminder that straight line graphs are in the format y equals m, which is the gradient, x plus c, which is the, the y-intercept. Or you might not use m and c, different letters could be used as well, but it's in general y equals gradient times x plus the, the y-intercept. So we're trying to find x and y-intercept, so um, because this is already in the correct format, that tells us that the, the two on the end there is already the y-intercept, okay? So we've already got that one. So in this case, we don't really need to think about uh, finding the y-intercept. In these cases, we need to think about it more carefully, but we're going to use this example to highlight a better way to think about it, because although we can read it off in this case just by looking at the number on the end, we can't do that here and here. Just before we actually go and find all the points, let's just have a quick think about what this graph looks like, and we'll just go ahead and sketch it just to get a bit of a visual on what is going on here. So the y-intercept is 2 and the gradient is 3. So we can draw a quick sketch. It doesn't have to be too accurate. So y-intercept would be maybe somewhere there. So that's a y-intercept of 2. The gradient is 3, but it's also positive 3. So that's going to be sloping like up to the right and fairly steep, steeper than 45 degrees. So maybe I will draw this in red. So it's going to be a line going something like that, okay, just as a rough sketch. So just by even looking at that sketch, which maybe the line's maybe not quite steep enough, but it's not too bad. Um, so that point there was at two. It looks to me roughly like that point might be around minus two, minus three, somewhere around that kind of region. It's definitely not minus 10 or a positive number. So it should be somewhere around minus two-ish. But if you think about it, this point here, because it's on the x-axis, it must have a y-coordinate of zero. So because it's right there on the x, if you're counting its up and down values, then we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 1, minus 2, etc. All of the points on the x-axis have got an up and down value, a y-value of zero. So if we're trying to find the y-intercept, uh, sorry, the x-intercept, so for the x-intercept, we're just going to let y equal 0, because we know that the y-coordinate of this point has to be 0. We could actually write that in. We could say this point has got a y-coordinate of 0, just in the same way that um, this, the full coordinate of this point, because it's on the y-axis, would actually be 0, 2. So 0 along the way and 2 up the way. So we know that this one has got a y-coordinate of uh, 0. So we're just going to let y be 0 and put that into the formula. So we get 0 for y equals 3x plus 2. Now we've got a little linear equation to solve to get that value that I estimated to be around minus 2. So just rearranging that, we would get 3x equals negative 2 and divide on both sides by 3 and we get negative 2 over 3. So negative 2 thirds, which is a little less than 1. So that probably does actually confirm that my line wasn't quite steep enough. So it should the point should maybe have been in around here somewhere. But we don't really care about the visual. The visual I just added in um, to help us work this problem. All we care about is the actual number. So the number itself would be minus 2 over 3 as the x-coordinate and 0 for the y-coordinate. So that is your x-intercept and that is your y-intercept. But the key point, and the reason why I've actually worked this example, is to highlight that if you're a point on the x-axis, your y-coordinate is 0. If you're a point on the y-axis, your x-coordinate is 0. So it's always a 0 for the opposite coordinate. If you're on the x, your y is 0. If you're on the y, your x is 0. But almost every student gets that muddled all the time. Sometimes I get it muddled because it's counterintuitive in a way. 
Um, well, it's not counterintuitive, but it's easy to get muddled because if you're along the x, you think, oh, the x must be zero, but it's actually the y that's zero. If you're on the y, then the x is zero. So just try to remember it's the opposite. So in that case there, we could have just read off the y-intercept, which we kind of did, but then we confirmed it as well. Um, or we could confirm actually by putting a zero in for, for x and we would get y equals zero plus two, which would be two. So that's fine. Let's take that over to these examples and see how we can adapt this technique. It's pretty much the same technique actually. We don't really need to think about it in any more elaborate way. We just don't have this arrangement of formula. We could rearrange the formula to put it in that same format, but that's kind of redundant because all we need to do is just take the same strategy, which is to say that if we're trying to find the x-intercept, then we're just going to let y be zero. And if we want to find the y-intercept, we're going to let x be zero. So we're not thinking about this visually at all. We're just going to do it purely algebraically. So letting the y be zero, so substituting zero in there for y, two times y, two times zero is zero equals four minus five y. Rearranging this linear equation to get ready to solve it, we would get five x equals four, and then just going ahead to divide both sides by five, and we get four over five. So the full x-intercept coordinate would be four over five for the x and zero for the y. So that's a point on the horizontal x-axis. So the other way around, to try and find the y-intercept, we're going to let x be zero because we know the y-intercept has got a zero x-coordinate. So we're just putting zero in there for x, so we're going to get 2y equals 4 minus zero, which is just 2y equals 4. So 2y equals 4, don't need to put a zero on the end. Divide both sides by 2 and we get y equals 2. So the full coordinate for this one is 0 for the x and 2 for the y. So we could just quickly plot that and see what that comes out to be because if you ever want to draw a straight line graph, you only need two points. And the two points you could use are the x and the y intercepts. So this point was at 4 over 5, 0. 4 over 5 is a little less than 1, but it's kind of close-ish to 1. So it's going to be roughly, say, 1, a little bit less than 1 along the way, and 0 up the way, so it's, say, somewhere there. This one here is 0, 2. So if we're, if we're saying that's 1, this one needs to be twice as high as that. So that would be 2 up around there somewhere. So it looks like in this case, our line is sloping down the way to the right, so a negative gradient and fairly steep. So probably more than 45 degrees, which would be a gradient of more than minus one. So it'd be minus two or minus three or somewhere like there. We could try and check that just by rearranging the formula to see if we get something that fits in with that. So if we rearrange it this one, just by dividing by two and reordering these terms to put it in the y equals mx plus c format, we would end up with y equals minus five over two x plus two. So the plus two, y-intercept, we can see that now in the correct format of equation, so that's fine, that checks out. Minus 5 over 2 gradient, that's minus 2.5, that fits in perfectly, so it's a negative gradient and it's fairly steep, so minus 2.5 is great. So you can always check that this makes sense by drawing a quick sketch, rearranging the formula just to validate that it is correct. Or you could start by rearranging the formula, then you've got an expectation for what some of these um, numbers might come out to be, or at least how they fit together to give you a correct looking graph. Okay, next one. So this one's also jumbled up, not in the correct format. So again, we're going to have to um, fix it. What we might do this time, just to mix it up a little, let's start by putting it into the correct format and then we'll work it from there. So if you divide both sides by three to get it to y equals and just spin it around, you would end up with y equals minus x plus two. If you're not sure what I did there, just take your time to work through that. But all I did was swap it around to get the y on the left and then divide by three to get to that point there. So this tells us that this line has got a y-intercept of two and it's got a negative one gradient, which would be a line 45 degrees sloping down to the right. So just to quickly plot that, So a y-intercept of two, which would be up about there, and a negative one gradient, so the line should slope down, 
at exactly 45 degrees. So a gradient of one or minus one is a 45 degree line, either up to the right for positive or down to the right for negative. So we're just gonna run through this again and we're gonna validate that that does actually all tie in. So if we go ahead and start by letting, well, we'll go for the x-intercept first. So start by letting y be zero. So if we put zero in there for y, we're gonna get the linear equation six minus three x equals zero. And solving that by rearranging for x, we would find that x equals two. x equals two, so the full coordinate then would be two, zero. So that's saying that this point here is at two, zero. Now, just before we do the y-intercept, we already know the y-intercept is two, so this point here should come out to be zero, two, because we've rearranged the formula ahead of time this, this time. If that point is at two, and it's a 45 degree line, that has to be at two as well. So that's just because of the geometry. So if that point here, the y-intercept was at five, and it was 45 degrees sloping down, then this point over here would be at five as well. Okay, so the, the, the two points, x and the y, intercepts should fit in with the gradient of the line. So if you've got a really steep line, you could have quite a high y-intercept and quite a small, quite a small number for the x-intercept because the line goes something like that. If it's a very shallow line like this, you could have a small low-down y-intercept and quite a large x-intercept. So we expect the y-intercept to be two just by the geometry. So for the y-intercept, we're gonna let x be zero, putting a zero in there for x, and we would get the equation six equals, so that becomes zero, six equals three y, and then dividing both sides by three, and we get, oh, sorry, not x, we get y equals, so we get y equals two. So the full coordinate, as we expected, has come out to be zero, two. So having a little bit of kind of insight about the geometry in these questions is really useful. Even if it's just a case of um, knowing that that's a positive gradient and that's negative, that can be a good enough sort of self-check to make sure that you've not made a mistake uh, in the question. So I just wanna go back quickly to the first example. I'm gonna make some space here. Just wanna consider an additional thing, which is to do with points lying on a line versus points lying not on a line. So let's just take actually the point we've got here, which is zero, two. So we're gonna work with this point, zero, two, and just to quickly restate the equation, which was y equals three x plus two. So what does it mean to be a point that lies on a line? Well, it means that if you take the x coordinate of the point, that one, and the y coordinate of the point, those numbers, zero and two in this case, should satisfy the equation. So what does it mean to satisfy an equation? It means if you take those numbers and put them into the equation, the equation works. In other words, the equation does express two equal quantities. So if we put two in the place of y, we get obviously two. If we put zero in the place of x, we get three times zero, which is zero, plus two, which is two. So that's obviously correct. That tells you that that point does lie on that line. If we take a point that obviously doesn't lie on the line, like say one across and one down the way, so the point one minus one, which would be there, that's clearly not on the line, that should not satisfy the equation. So if we take that point, minus one minus one, and try and plug it in there to the equation and see what happens. So for the y, we're gonna get minus one. For the x, we're gonna get three times minus one plus two. Three times minus one is minus three plus two. Um, sorry, my mistake. So this should have been a plus one, not a minus one. <laughs> so that should be a plus one in there, giving us a three plus two. So we get minus one equals five. But minus one obviously does not equal five. So we've reached like a contradiction, which is what we expected because this point does not lie on the line. So points that lie on a line satisfy the equation of the line with their x and their y coordinates. Points that don't lie on the line don't satisfy the equation, even as much as I clearly wanted that one to satisfy the equation. So if you are checking that, be careful. But that's a really important point. That's what the equations of lines are. They are little formulas that validate whether points lie on the line or don't. They're the recipe that gives you all the points on the line. 
Um, so if you're ever asked to check whether a point lies on a line or whether it's not on the line, you just need to sub it into the equation and test whether the equation works. So a quick recap, um, this was about primarily how we find the x and the y-intercept. We find the x-intercept by letting y be zero, we find the y-intercept by letting x be zero. We let the opposite coordinate be zero, and then we just get a linear equation to solve. We can additionally check it by getting the original, um, getting, the form, getting the format into the sort of correct format for the equation of a line, and then maybe sketching the graph just to confirm that the geometry and the numbers that we get for the x and the y-intercept actually make sense. Having that geometrical check is really, really useful in these kind of part algebraic, part geometry topics. And for straight lines in particular, it's a really great tool. It can just help you catch mistakes. So if you get, if you get um, the opportunity to, which you, you would have, then just sketch the graph. Sketching the graph is just a quick visual check that the answers that you're creating actually make sense.